Adam Kalnaki returns to action on March 7 when he takes on Robert Hellenius in a WBA heavyweight title eliminator. Now Kalnaki says that the heavyweight division is wide open at the moment. So I'm going to quote him. He says, the division is wide open. Right now, Tyson Fury is considered the number one, but his previous two fights before the Deontay Wilder rematch weren't that great. So how good is Fury really? If you look at the top 10 heavyweights, I'm the one with a clean record, no losses or draws. On Saturday, March 7, I have to prove that I belong in a title fight. Well, I agree with Kaunaki in the sense that the division is wide open. I'm reading this from a Boxing Scene article, and below one of the comments here is from clearly a very, very naive or inexperienced or just not very intelligent boxing fan who says, is it wide open? Fury and AJ pretty much have the division locked down. I don't see other guys beating them. No chance. It's like people haven't learned anything, even from the past three years, in terms of acting like certain fighters have got the division locked down. What, has this guy forgotten all about Andy Ruiz? What utter nonsense. You don't even have to look back to boxing history to the 90s, the 80s, or the 70s. You can just look back over the past couple years and see that nobody has the division locked down. The division is wide open, just like Kaunaki said. And don't be at all surprised if you see Wilder lose to somebody outside of the top three. Don't be at all surprised if you see Fury lose to somebody outside of the top three. Do you know how close Tyson Fury was to losing to Otto Wallin? If it wasn't for the fact that he had this Wilder rematch signed, and this big contract behind him. If Tyson Fury was just any other fighter, he would have got stopped on that cut in the Otto Wallin fight and would have lost by TKO because that cut was caused by a punch. It wasn't caused by a headbutt. Right? So he was so close to losing against Otto Wallin. People don't even realize. And Tyson Fury has come close to losing in other fights. Obviously, it was a long time ago, early on in his career, when he had those two fights against John McDermott, the first fight, people, a lot of uh, the uh, British boxing public regard that as a robbery to this day. A robbery that Tyson Fury should have lost. Steve Cunningham dropped him heavy. Nevin Pikage dropped him heavy. So for every brilliant performance that Tyson Fury's had, and he had a fantastic performance against Deontay. Well, let, let's not sell his performance against Wilder short. Let's not say Wilder was a bomb. And no, no, Wilder was a very, very good fighter, very dangerous. And Fury destroyed him. And he also schooled Klitschko. So let's not try and diminish anything Tyson Fury has done. He's a brilliant fighter, Tyson Fury. But he's a flawed genius. Tyson Fury is one of them guys who's either as good as, a, as good as the best of them or as bad as the worst. And you could say that for several other fighters in the heavyweight division right now. So again, I agree with Kaunaki. The division is wide open. Even if we get an undisputed champion, theoretically this year, who's to say that he's really the best? Who's to say if AJ beats Fury, that AJ's really the best? Or if Wilder, excuse me, if Fury beats AJ, they're really the best. I think they'll be the best provisionally, and I think that they will be more qualified to call themselves the number one heavyweight in the division than anybody else, for sure. They will be the consensus champion as, as uh, undisputed. But who's to say that a Hergovic, an Usek, a Miller, a Hunter, a Dubois, a Joyce, a Jagba, I mean, there are countless other heavyweights coming up through the ranks now maybe even some we haven't considered. Who's to say that one of them won't manage to shock the world and take out the undisputed champion? People, it can happen. It's already happened countless times before in the history of the heavyweight division. One thing I've learned to expect from heavyweight boxing is the unexpected. So, yeah, if anybody thinks that the shocks and the upsets are over now, and that the division is pretty much settled with AJ and Fury at the top, I would tell you to think again. <laughs> I think there's going to be people outside of AJ and Fury and outside of Wilder as well who are going to come in and 
start ruffling up feathers and taking out some of them top three guys? I think so. History shows me that that is likely to happen. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Kaunaki, Hellenius. Now, here's me banging on about how wide open the division is. Kaunaki, Hellenius is a poor fight. Hellenius just lost to Gerald Washington of all people. And we saw Gerald Washington's level uh, the other weekend when he was knocked out by Charles Martin. So to be taken on a guy who Gerald Washington just stopped, that's shocking. No idea why PBC Al Heyman have decided to match Kaunaki this weekly. Maybe it's just so he can get a highlight reel knockout. Perhaps that's all it is. Uh, a promotional tool, you know, just a way to put some footage together in order to build a fight between him and whoever, Deontay Wilder, maybe Andy Ruiz. Interestingly, Andy Ruiz was saying that he doesn't want to fight a proper fight next. He wants to have like a little warm up or a tune up fight to get back in the swing of things and then maybe take on a Luis Ortiz or whoever else. So yeah, Kaunaki versus maybe Charles Martin again, because the first fight was pretty good. Charles Martin came on strong late in that fight and he managed to shake Kaunaki a few times. It would be a rematch though, so there's no immediate need for it, but over there on PBC, who is there for, for Kaunaki to fight right now? A Jagba? I don't think they'd put a Jagba in with Kaunaki just yet. A Jagba looked poor in his last fight. So, yeah, who else is there? You know, not exactly a load of uh, top-level heavyweights over at PBC at the moment. They've got Wilder, they've got Kaunaki. Who am I missing? Washington, Martin. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I think Joe Joyce had some kind of deal with the PBC. I'm not sure if he's still connected to them or not. Maybe one of you guys could enlighten me in the comments. Anyway, that's enough from me for now. Let me know what you feel in the comments below. It's happening about.